it was quite apparent that like a new version of me had been born. Mm-hmm. So the the inspiration behind the name of the project, the resurrection, it wasn't to do with the the whole nearly dying and and surviving. I kind of moved on from that. It, what mm-hmm. what happened happened, and I moved on from that. What it was is that I, I feel like a part of me died in that crash. Right. Yeah. 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 Hi, it's Bugsy Malone, and welcome to Enemies, Friends Like These. Hi, this is Dermot Kennedy. Welcome to Enemies, Friends Like These. When, when did we meet? I think it was early June you had messaged me on Instagram, and just that you had been listening to my stuff and enjoyed it, and which was crazy to me because I've been listening to your stuff for a long time. I told you in a text that a friend of mine that I used to be in a band with uh, sent me your song Face in Time a long time ago. I don't know how old that song is. You do. It's probably like four or five years. But yeah, uh, and I was just blown away by it. Everything. It's just it's funny because especially in rap and hip hop, there's just so much music. It's the same with what I do. You know, like there's so many artists and it's so saturated. And so it's so powerful when something stands out and when something is just like that extra bit. Um, powerful and so i've been a fan for a long time and so when we you, you reached out that was just a really cool thing it was outnumbered uh, right that somebody put me in, in in touch with um and i remember just i remember just watching that and it was just an intense i just remember thinking that the the song the way you presented yourself the the lyrics and the way that you sung you're actually mm-hmm. performing shot i mean sometimes i find with videos i like the song and then I watched the video and the artist is lacking that true right, right. emotion and conviction. When I, when I looked into your eyes, I, I believed you, you get what I mean? So from, from there on, that was my introduction to you. Right, and, right, right. Do you know what I mean? And then from there on, I'm just, I was just trying to get in contact and just glad we got For it. For sure. I haven't collaborated with many people at all. And so... Me to me, when you think about legacy and careers and all the work you put out, it's all so precious and so important. And so if I went to you and it was reversed, you like I just think it's so important that someone takes your vision seriously, you know, because the shittiest thing ever would be if it had come back from me and you were kind of like, fucking hell, like this is sort of half hearted or like someone hasn't sort of like actually tried to add something to this. And so... That was important for me, yeah. And and I just think it's interesting when you're the artist featuring on something because considering the lyrics were already there and the idea was already there, even when I got to the studio to record it, I was very conscious of the fact that what happened to you hadn't happened to me, right? So I was trying, I was trying my best to imagine how you might feel. And then also what was important for me was to take anything that I've been through that's been difficult and just channeled that same feeling, you know what I mean? Because even though I haven't gone through that, there's certain things that are potentially as intense or as sort of just with that amount of grief and worry and stuff like that. And and so I just tried to channel that as best I could. Yeah. But I mean, when you were talking, I, what I felt from you was a seriousness about Yeah. Your- I was speaking to somebody that was serious about what they'd done. And I could tell that artistically and creatively, you was truly kind of immersing yourself in the situation. So I right. found myself just kind of explaining life as opposed to the song. Do you get what I'm saying? Sure. It's like, here's, sure. where yeah. I'm, here's what I've been going through. Here's where my headspace is in, in, in terms of music. And I could just tell that to you, it was kind of important for you to really put yourself like you say, almost through the, the, the scenario. So you was one of the people that had a, a place in my mind of like, that guy, I'm a, I'm a fan of that guy's work. Mm. And when, I, when I've made the song, the certain bits I'm, I'm singing, and I just remember thinking, I need the emotion. Remember I said to you on the phone, like, mm-hmm. you'll be able to bring an emotion to this song that I can't, vocally, I just can't get there. <laughs> you sounded good though. I said that to the fellow I was recording it with. I was just like, you sounds good. Like being nice, you being too kind. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to going through the, the, the crash situation, mm-hmm. I was in a place where I didn't feel like I had loads to say. 
Uh, these, yeah. these things I could have said, but it didn't feel worthy to me of making an album. So yeah. I was kind of, you know, sat around thinking about, you know, my life and like you say, trying to access that um, that creative space. It's an, it's an important thing that as an artist to, to be able to find the lyrics of what you're trying to say. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think what happened for me is when I went through the crash, all my inhibitions, everything just like went on pause. It was a case of just recovery. All yeah. I had to do in the world was recover because you just kind of let go of everything. And what I found was in that stage of letting go of kind of my career, letting go of where I'm up to and, and what I needed to do that's when I was able to tap into my deepest and most, most creative place. And it's just come from a place of here's where I'm at. So I'm almost scared to release it because I'm almost like, will, will, will people kind of, will people like to hear uh-huh. people, you know, you know what, making this album, like, it, it, it hurt me, you know. It hurt really? Me. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. like opening them wounds, you know what I mean? And just going into, I mean, I could have not made this album and, and, and felt level. Yeah. I mean, and then, and then the minute I'd, I'd tapped into certain things, psychologically, it was just a trip. I just found myself just trying to just hold it all together till the album was yeah. made. And then once it was all put together, it was like, you know what? That is my last time talking on some of these subjects. Because it's- Really? The, yeah, it's the past and I'm over it. I mean, look, the inspiration behind the, the the project was going through the the situation I went through. Mm. Oh man, you you know you you smashed up and then you're healing, and then you let go of everything that your ambitions and everything you're trying to be. Your ego smashed to pieces because you're not a quarter of the person that you were. So you yes. just kind of sat at home, you know, on on the sofa, just kind of enjoying it. That's how that's how I found myself enjoying it. And then it hits you, you know, any of the little things that you're still resisting against in your mind and, you know, any little problems that you've not quite got to the bottom of, they start to affect your inner peace. So I found Mm. myself kind of, bam, just hit a brick wall all of a sudden with these kind of things that with ego and just kind of enjoying my life and being this kind of musician, I'd not truly dealt with them. So as I started to deal with them, Naturally, what comes natural to me is uh, I start to speak about it in music. Yeah. So that was the natural process, which I love that process because that means that the music came before the idea of an album. Now, before the crash, I had I was trying to make an album. I made one song, two songs, and then a crash. Right. And then when I crashed, I wasn't thinking of an album. I was yeah. just thinking about the fact that what and then what happens? What you find is you have a near death experience. I mean, we spoke about this on the phone when we when we first ever spoke. And you mm-hmm. have a near death experience, and and um, you gotta be honest with yourself after that. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. Because you, you just realize you was taking the easy road out on some things, and so I, I had a kind of I'd unlocked a new level of honesty. Yeah, for sure. As I started to speak in in songs and and speak over beats it was quite apparent that like a new version of me had been born. Mm-hmm. So the, the inspiration behind the name of the project, the resurrection, it wasn't to do with the, the whole nearly dying and, and surviving. I kind of moved on from that. It, what, mm-hmm. what happened happened and I moved on from that. What it was is that I feel like a part of me died in that crash. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, there was, wow. Um, you know, what part of you do you know? It's, it's ego. There'll be parts yeah. of you that, as an individual that you, you you don't get access to the settings. You know, like on Twitter, you can edit your profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in real life, as a person, you know, if you have the perfect status with the perfect profile picture, you know, sometimes we might leave that and not edit our profile as a, as an individual yeah. over a long period of time. But then when you uh, in a, a situation like that, it forces you to look at yourself, and you can you can kind of see where uh, where you're going wrong, so to speak. So I think I think the part of me that died was a part of my ego, you know, resentment, yeah, um, 
things that I'd not really moved uh, past or forgiven people for. Right. Um, so I just took them things off myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm even a lighter person. So yeah, I just feel like after the crash, I had a lot of inner peace just because I let go of a lot of stuff. Uh huh. It's so crazy that something so traumatic has to happen for you to see that sometimes, you know? Something yeah. so, so sort of difficult. Like, do you feel like your art comes from a different place, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. Feel like, I, I feel like I've, I've earned... What happened when I first put, started putting out music was, like, I'd say my most honest stuff and the things I wanted to say, and people wouldn't really be interested. And yeah. I quite, quite quickly realised that in my uh, genre of music, it is bravado that impresses people and that people are interested in. And I just kind yeah. of seen what these other guys were saying, and I, think, I was thinking to myself, I've, I've lived that. Yeah. I'm worse than that you know I started to tell that side um, of the story but I feel like through the consistent growth as an artist and the development of my fan base I feel like I've earned the right to not worry about the bravado what other people are, are, are bringing to the table just because you know I'm a veteran now yeah I've been yeah. through stuff in this music thing you know I've sold out tours I've yeah know, been in the charts like now I can really take the risk because if nobody ever listened to the the next music that I'm trying to put out, if nobody liked it, yeah. at least I know I've not tried to cater for what I think it is people are impressed by. Yeah. 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 I, I find myself like trying to find that balance constantly. Cause for me, obviously it's very important. Like I'm the same. So like when I started, I would write all these songs that mean the world to me and and then I wasn't getting much of a reaction off it. And so I know I can write songs where, where people will relate to it, but it's like, it's, it's most important for you to relate to it and for you to feel that message. Cause yeah, like you said, at the end of the day, it's you that's got to live with it, you know? Like, do you ha when you think about music and stuff, do you have like an end goal in all of this? Do you know what you want it to look like in like 10 years? As of, as of recently, yeah. I kind of figured out that anybody that is a fan of my work is just somebody that is is listening to me just kind of um, writing in my diary. Coming from the kind of situation I started in, the goal for me has always been to heal. Um, yeah. And and that's where I feel like after the crash and, and the, the progress that I made after the crash, not only did I, did I heal physically, I kind of healed mentally and, and spiritually, you know? So that's... Yeah that's the that's the goal and that's how i feel you know once you you you've got a level of exposure i wanted to make sure that i, I had a certain level of earnings mm -hmm. under my belt to make sure that i'm not stuck in an awkward life situation yes yeah that was kind of important but i think the, the main kind of importance for me was just kind of just inner peace man i kind of feel like i'm, I'm there now so anything from here on in is is a bonus you know that's cool. That's a nice place to be. Strangely enough, I uh, I had to do a thing today where I put a certain amount of money into a pension, right? And I got asked the question, when do you want to retire? I was like, I don't know, like 32. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and then I think of people say like Bruce Springsteen and Bono and all that who are still doing it into their 60s and 70s. And I think I'll always play music, but like even the way like we talk about being on tour and stuff is like, I don't know if I want to do that for like 30 years, like seriously. Ultimately, it's kind of similar to what you said. I think it's beyond music, right? Like I just want everybody to be happy. I want, <clears throat> I want my family to be good. I want everybody around me to be happy. I think it, it, it's, it's really cool to me the way you kind of stay where you're at and you're building your career and your legacy from where you're at. Like you don't feel compelled to go do stuff in LA and London and blah, blah, blah. Like you can build it from where you're from. And for me, that's very important as well. And I think I just, I, I, it's been very important to me on this journey to make sure I don't sort of harm certain relationships or become distant with people because that's ultimately what's going to be there in the end. Right. So uh, I want to go far enough that I feel like what, all my massive insecurities have been like, I've gotten all the validation I need. And then also just like return to a normal life where everyone's good, you know? You have to strip yourself back and, and figure out who you are. Yeah. What, 
what you enjoy, you know, what is the essence of your talent. And the essence of my talent isn't necessarily rapping. That's a skill that I acquired as a teenager right. that I've, I've, you know, I've been blessed enough to, to earn some money out of and build a career out of. But yeah. the essence of my talent is kind of storytelling. I'm a big fan of stories, mm -hmm. films, books, you know, a tale from an old person. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, 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 I'm built of stories. So I've become a good storyteller. So I think in terms of storytelling, that's something I'll be doing into my 60s. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just won't be in the format and in the medium that I'm doing it in now. I feel like this format and this medium suits me for now and this age group. Um, right. And, and as I start to transition, I'll just figure out, you know, what it is, where it is I feel like expressing myself next because I feel like um, self-expression is just important. True. <laughs> If you are a creative person, that means you're an emotional person and um, emotionally sensitive and stuff like that. And I just feel like you, you need to be expressing yourself. You need to be letting these, these feelings out. Otherwise, it can just eat you up, you know? Who inspired me to make music? Honestly, like, if I'm, if I'm going to give my sort of correct answer, there's a guy called Justin Vernon from a band called Bonnie Bear, which to me is just like the best band it's just my favorite thing in the world. Like anything I get lyrically, musically, it, it, like they are just top of everything to me. But rather than whoever inspired me to make music, I think people that just inspired me in general are like, it comes from all aspects and all walks of life, right? Like they even, <clears throat> have you ever seen that documentary Senna about Ayrton, Ayrton Senna, the F1 driver? Like that to me is one of the most inspiring things I've ever seen because like, he had that race in Monaco in the Grand Prix where he was first and no one was catching him. And Ferrari were in his ear telling him to slow down because they were like, we're good. Like we have this race. And he pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until he totaled the car and he, he, he wrecked the race. He was purely competing with himself. You know what I mean? Like he was just going the whole time. And, and rather than just saying like, all right, sweet, I won the race. He was, in his head, he was saying, like, how do I actually just get so far ahead of everybody else that I set an example? And so things like that inspire me to make music. And music isn't the be-all and end-all. Like, I see myself as a person as opposed to just a musician. So uh, I kind of take inspiration from everywhere. But musically, it would be Bonnie Iver, yeah. Yeah. What about you? I think the person whose legacy, I'm inspired by legacies, legends. It's just something I've been mm -hmm. saying since I was young. And um, Vincent van Gogh for me was is is a is a just something that just kind of fascinated me in that like right you know like you know who was this guy he was upset he was in a bad place and x y and z and in the end it didn't didn't end well for him and stuff but while he was alive he got to a, a level of his, of craft craftsmanship that like you know between us we couldn't afford a, a van Gogh painting. Mm. And that just kind of blows my mind because he's, you know, he's not, he's not here anymore. So that was one of my original um, inspirations. But when yeah. I was inspired by that, it was my mum my, my went to art school. So I just kind of had it imposed on me, the, these artists and you know, to, to impress you felt like you had to paint or draw and that's the way it was. But what I quickly found with um, painting and drawing is it's a lot of effort, you know, yeah. I'm bone idle. So yeah. just, I just come to a point where I just find it easier to speak. So then when I started to try and tell them same stories, but like in, in music, I found myself, my mum used to listen to Stevie Wonder. Yeah. I just love the way he used his voice as an instrument. That's what he used to say. I like, I like that. And then, and then I started to get, as I got a bit older and a bit cooler, mm -hmm. I started to get interested into like um, Tupac. I listened to mm -hmm. Tupac and I thought, this is interesting. And I kind of got across rap music and like these guys, because I'm not, I'm not blessed with um, singing ability like yourself. I can put a tune, like, you know, I can, I can hit, you know, notes. Yep. If you ask me to sing a Stevie Wonder song, I'm, I'm on my depth. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. When I started to hear these guys rapping, I just felt like, you know, this is interesting. So it was, yeah. You know, so I try and take, um, inspiration from many different fields because then that way nobody can duplicate my blueprint 
because yeah. I have access to what it is that's running through my head. Um, but another inspiration from modern time, I told you on the phone when we spoke, was um, Conor McGregor. Yeah. Um, me and him was kind of coming up at the same time. Mm. I was kind of representing my city and where I was from in a, in a London-centric industry. Yeah. And he was representing his, you know, his city and where he was from in a kind of an American-centric industry. He, his watching his journey and the way he conducted himself um, was inspiring, especially some of them really early fights and the, the yeah. some of the groundbreaking stuff they done. Well, the first time I ever played in front of people was in the school talent show and I was 10 years old and there was 800 people there and it was about 15 years before I could gather a crowd that big again, which is hilarious. But like, I think the first few times I played were open mics where my dad would bring me in because I was under 18 and so they were in pubs and I would just go in and you would basically just like plead with the bouncer to be like, I'm literally going in playing two songs and then I'm gone. And like Dublin's a nice place to start out doing that because it's just a welcoming atmosphere. And there's always been a culture of songwriters and poets and artistry. So uh, you're kind of, you immediately get a teeny bit of respect just when you even, just to have your guitar and be willing to try that you get a little bit of respect. So it was a nice place to sort of start out. I've had stupid stuff happen. I was playing a gig once where uh, I was on stage playing. I was support for somebody else. And uh, and they were smoking in the dressing room downstairs. And so the fire alarm went off. And uh, the, whatever way this venue was set up, the whole place went into this sort of panic mode lockdown type thing. And so these shutters came down over the bar. A shutter came down on stage in front of me. And so I just gradually had this little curtain come down. <laughs> and so I've had, yeah, I've had like, I've like really... I feel like I've done my due diligence in terms of like live stuff. I've had enough awkward stuff. I was supporting an artist and it was just this kind of empty bar. Yeah. Like four guys over there and like six people over there. And it was yeah. like, what is going on? A bit of a yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, and you have to do it. You got to do it. And I was just kind yeah. of running there. A couple of my friends, I've got the yeah. mic. It was unprofessional. I wasn't even on a stage. I was just in the middle of the floor. And my first thing, I was like, everybody okay, yeah? And nobody oh, said, no one yeah. said, <laughs> you didn't say anything, bro. I was just stood there like, what? Soul destroyed. 